Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials video 121. It's on ray diagrams drawn for mirrors. This is a beautiful picture of Jupiter, and it's only there because we've made telescopes made of mirrors that can take all the light, so this is a concave mirror here, focusing it off a plane mirror and then eventually to the observer. And the bigger that mirror is, the more of an image that we can have, or more detail. And the Europeans are started construction on what's called the extraordinarily large telescope to give you a sense of how large here is a human for scale and so it's got a massive mirror and so we can gather more of that light we have a better image and so when light hits a mirror it's reflected off the surface and it can create an image the three mirrors that we'll look at are plane mirrors concave mirrors and convex mirrors but to figure out where the image actually is you can draw in a series of rays which are straight lines and represent where the light is moving so if we draw in a plane mirror mirror, for example, and have rays moving towards it from the right to the left, as they hit the surface, they're going to bounce right back. And so since we know that, we can angle those rays coming in at different angles and we can figure out where the image actually is. Concave mirror, the, remember, the way I remember it is it's like going into a cave. And so this is part is going to be the side of the mirror that's facing us, the observer. And so if we've got that, as light comes in, we're going to get light bounce like this. So we'll have a different image versus a convex mirror. That's where it bends outward. We're going to have a totally different image because it's kind of diverging away from that set parallel point. And so using ray diagrams, we can figure out where all those rays go. And therefore, we can figure out where is that image? Is it a real image or a virtual image? We'll talk about that in a second. And how big is that image actually going to be? And so let's remember reflection is going to be light bouncing off a surface. And our only rule is that the angle of incidence, the angle between normal and the way at which the ray comes in is equal to the angle of reflection. And so I took this picture of myself using a Bozeman Science shirt and I took it with my phone using both the front facing and rear facing camera. And in the rear facing camera I stood up to a mirror. So can you figure out which of these images was taken using a mirror and which wasn't? Well, probably. And so let's get to why they look a little bit different. And so to draw a ray diagram for a plane mirror, it's fairly simple. So let's say this is our eye. This is the object. It's just an arrow pointed up. And we want to draw how that mirror creates that image. Well, the first thing you have to realize is that there's going to be a virtual side to the mirror. And so every time in a ray diagram you see dotted lines, that means that they're not real. They're virtual. In other words, you're facing a mirror and there's no area back here. It's just created in your mind. You couldn't go visit it. It's a virtual area. And so the first thing you do with a plane mirror is you draw the object in an equal distance away from the plane mirror. So I've drawn a virtual image. It's the same exact size. It's upright in nature. And now we're just going to draw in the ray diagram. And so what you do is you choose a point on the top of the object and you draw a line straight to the eye. Now it's dotted on this side because this is virtual, remember, and it's going to be a straight line to my eye. We know the light's going into my eye. We don't shoot light out of my eye. That's why the arrow is in this direction. Once I've done that, now I take that same real object and I'm gonna draw a line like that. You can see the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection and it goes right back to my eye like that. Now we choose a part of the object. Let's choose the bottom of the object and we do the same thing. To my eye, virtual to real. And now I'm going to draw that in the real world like that. And now I've got my ray diagram for my plane mirror. It's as simple as that. Again, draw the virtual image on the other side and then connect the dots and then make sure that you've got angle incidence equals the angle of reflection. And so why does it look weird in a mirror? And what I mean by weird is you notice that my, my shirt was backwards. And so with one of those selfies it looked like that and on the other one it was reversed. So why is that? Well what we're doing, I could turn it around, it looked normal, is that the up down, right, left isn't being reflected. What's really being reflected is the plane into the mirror. And so we get reflection of that. And so as your shirt, as you're wearing the shirt, you're, you're really wearing it 
um, not facing you, but away from you. And that away from you image is, is going to be what's reflected. And so let's practice this. Imagine you're standing next to a mirror and I ask you the following question. How large a mirror do I need to see my whole image using a plain mirror? And so to practice, I would encourage you to pause the video and draw this one out but I'm gonna do it for you right now. And so first thing you do is you create the virtual version of yourself on that side. You then start at the top, and so I'm gonna draw an arrow to my eyes. How did it get there? It went from the surface of my head, bounced off, and came back to my eye. Now I go to the bottom of the image, it goes to my eye, and then I bounce it off like that. And so if you make sure that it's going in the right direction, how big is the mirror going to be? It's really small. It's actually gonna be half of my height and I can still see my feet in the mirror because it's going to be reflected like that. Now let's move on to a concave mirror. So a concave, remember, we're going into a cave like this and the object's over here and then the observer is somewhere out here. So you're looking at the image. And so for this one, we have to define a couple of points. First, we've got the center of curvature or the center of that mirror. So imagine that as a center. So the radius to the mirror goes right back to that center point. We're also gonna add a focal point. So the focal point will become important in just a second. But when you're drawing a ray diagram for a concave mirror, mirror, what you'll do is always start with a ray that's parallel to the mirror, then go through the focal point, then you go through the focal point, and then go back to parallel. So let me show you what that looks like. So you need to know where the focal point is. Also, it's going to be half of the center of curvature, or you'll see sometimes this written as F and this as 2F out here. But again, we're on this side of the image over here. First thing you do is you draw a ray now from the real object, and it's going to be parallel to the mirror and then that ray is going to go through the focal. And so that's what's neat about the focal length and the focal point is if it's ever parallel to the mirror, it's gonna bounce off. You can see the angle of incidence equals angle of reflection and it goes right through the focal point like that. So first go parallel through focal and now we're gonna take that same top of the image and we're gonna go turn it around. So now we're gonna draw through the focal and then that's gonna create a parallel. So it's the opposite of that rule. So now we look at where is the light coming? So here it's coming out, here it's coming out. And so where's our image going to be? Well, it's gonna be right here. Now it's not a dotted line, it's a real true image right there. So it's a real image. You can see it's smaller in size and it's gonna be inverted. So it's gonna be upside down. Now real image, you could take a piece of paper, put it there and you would actually see the image on the paper itself. It's not a virtual image at all. If you look at this, here's a concave mirror. So the cameraman is taking a picture of it and you can see the buildings behind him are inverted upside down and they're much smaller in size. And that's gonna be a concave mirror. Now I've moved the object up here to the center of curvature. I would encourage you again, pause the video and try to draw this one out. But let me show you what it would look like. So you start at the top. I'm gonna to draw a parallel line. Then where's it go? Through the focal length, focal point. Now I'm gonna start at the top again through the focal and then it's gonna go parallel. And so where's my image going to be? It's gonna be upside down like that. Now you might be thinking, how do I do, how do I know where the bottom of it is? So imagine doing the same rules on the bottom. So on the bottom we could go parallel back through focal and then through focal back through parallel. So the bottom is going to be right where the top of that image actually was. So you can see now it's the same size, it's inverted. Um, let's see what happens when you move inside the focal length. You can see that we've zoomed in here. That's where it gets a little bit crazy. And so this is the only different one that you really have to draw. So let me draw it again. So I'm always gonna start at the top of the object. I go parallel to the mirror through the focal. So that seems easy. But now it's hard for me to go through the focal. And so what I have to do is actually turn it around and I'd go through the focal like that. And now I draw it coming off parallel. So it's a little bit different, but what's interesting you'll note is that this ray and this ray, as they move away from the mirror, they're moving away from each other. They're not converging at any point, they're diverging. And so that tells me that I'm not gonna find an image on this side of the mirror. And so what I can do is I can take those two rays and I can extend them into the virtual side of the mirror. And so where's the image going to be? It's actually gonna be on that virtual size. It's gonna be larger in size and it's gonna be upright in nature. It seems a little bit crazy. And remember, once we get into the focal length, then it gets a little bit crazy. So let's make sure that this is true. So I've got a sim bucket simulation here. What you can do is you can move the object on the left side 
you can see that as I move the object on the left side, we've got a real image that's inverted. I made it a little bit smaller so this works. Now we're at the center of curvature, it's 2F, so it's upside down. But watch what happens as we approach the focal length. That image is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Once we get to the focal length, it's really not defined that image. And then as we move to the right side, what are we going to see? The image jumps to the right side. It's now a virtual image. It's going to be really, really big, and it's going to be upright in nature. And finally, let's go to the convex mirror now. So the convex mirror, we're on this side of the image again, or this side of the mirror. And so same rules. What I do is draw a parallel. And now for focus, I'm going to use the focus on the inside of the mirror. So it goes parallel and then we get a bounce that's going to be uh, through the focal point like that. I always be checking, you know, is my angle of incidence equal to my angle of reflection? That looks all good. Next we go focal to parallel. So it's going to go like that, extended through, and now we're going to parallel. And so if we do it like that, you can see that there's divergence over here, but we can see the convergence back here. So where's that image going to be? On this side, it's gonna be upright and it's gonna be virtual in nature. It's gonna be smaller, reduced in size. And if you've ever been on a bus and see one of those convex mirrors on the back, what do you see? Well, the people in the back of the bus are gonna be upright, but they're also gonna be diminished or smaller in size. And so did you learn how to use data collection? Again, I used a sim bucket simulation to make sure my ray diagrams matched up with what really happens. You could actually use mirrors to do this and measure the distances. And then finally, can you draw ray diagrams for a plane mirror? A concave mirror, remember with concave you have to be both inside and outside of the focal point, and a convex mirror? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.